Hey there, Dr. Anna Maria Helt here, herbalist and microbiologist at Osada Natural Health. And I'm back with you here on our Rocky Mountain Medicinal Plant Walk. These were videos that I shot in, I guess, mid-May and then I believe early July of this year, 2021, in the San Juan Mountain Range of the Rockies. Uh, and some of my favorite areas to introduce people to our high elevation medicinal plants. And so part one and part two of this series focused on some plants at about 9,000 feet elevation that were very early on in their growth stage so that you can see them when they're young and in some cases before they're blooming. It's an important way to be able to identify plants when they're young, when they're blooming and maybe more easily recognizable, but also um, later on in the season. It's good to look at them at different times of the year. For this first part of the series, I'm focusing on just introducing you to the plants. And then um, in the videos that I shot more into the summer, I'm going to focus more on the actual medicine of the plants. So we've been looking at stuff in a riparian zone at about 9,000 or so feet in elevation. And now I'm going to bump it up to about 10,000 plus feet in elevation, still in mid-May or so. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I'm a week out of surgery and back at it. So here we go. So I'm at about 10,000 feet now here in the San Juan Mountains and have come across some um, Usnea barbata, Usnea old man's beard, one of the multiple lichens called old man's beards. Here you go. One of the ways to know you've got the right species is to grab it and gently pull one of these strands apart and there will be a rubber band like thing in the middle, almost like elastic. Now the usnea we're looking at here is a little old and dried out so if I were to do that it would just snap and you wouldn't really see that rubber bandy thing. So it's two layered medicine. <laughs> the green outside part is more antibacterial and the white inside part is a little bit more immune stimulating and some recent research has come out actually talking about lichens like this which are algae and a fungi living in cahoots together it turns out that there may actually be two different species of fungi that are in a lichen along with the algae so it's a bigger party than we initially thought and while I said I wasn't going to really get into medicinal uses uh, on this very early foray, this is a great uh, botanical for stubborn infections, stubborn bacterial infections, fungal infections. This commonly finds its way into urinary tract formulas for UTIs, uh, but you can use it for infections elsewhere in the body as well as on the body. And some people will make tea out of this and you will get some of the medicine with tea, but the strong antibacterial compounds are actually uh, not super water soluble. So I'll actually do a double extract of this. Um, so I will make a tea out of it and combine it with a tincture to try to get all of the medicine. So that's Usnea. Believe it or not, this slope in just probably a, a few weeks is going to be covered with plants. And we're going to look kind of into the sun a little bit here. It can be washed out. But this is going to be full of larkspur. There might even be some monkhood that shows up, and mullein, and uh, corn lily, and <laughs> all kinds of other plants in a profuse bloom. But we're a little early. It's mid May. So it's a bit early in the year. This is up in La Plata Canyon still. Around, I'm estimating 10,000 feet. You can still see that there's some snow out there. Uh, but I'm gonna be back here in a few weeks to show you the difference. Uh, because we're at such a high elevation, stuff up here has to really grow and bloom and get its shit done fast. There's a right there just getting going uh, there's a short growing season here the snow right here on this particular slope just went away within the past couple of weeks so the plants have to get growing and reproduce 
before more snow hits sometime often later in the summer sometimes a little later than that uh, into the fall you never know once you start getting up into this elevation here um, but yep high elevation plants here is another beautiful pedicularis plant this time we're over in la plata canyon about 10,000 ish feet or so I'm not sure which species this is yet. You can see last year's stalk growing up here. This is a perennial plant. Dara Seville talks a lot about this plant. It is one of my favorite medicines. Where she is down in the Albuquerque area, it's starting to go away. Uh, uh, they are right on the edge of where climactic changes and dryness and the drought are becoming more obvious. It's still pretty plentiful here in the San Juan Mountains, but you know, we're keeping an eye on it. Uh, this is a great pain relieving med, especially when we're talking about injuries and arthritis, also uh, tense muscles. I like to smoke it small amounts for mood. <laughs> I find it very comforting. I find it great heart medicine, emotionally speaking. And Dara actually pointed out once when I mentioned that, that, you know, it is a muscle relaxer. So not perhaps so surprising <laughs> that it has an influence on the heart, which is after all a muscle. And uh, this is one that can have unpredictable effects for some people. Uh, I don't know if I could go as far as calling it psychoactive effects, but I gave some extract to a friend of mine who is about twice my size and was in a motorcycle accident and was hurting. So I, I put several squirts in a pint of water and asked him to drink it throughout the evening and he slammed it and wound up <laughs> having some weird effects. Kind of, He said he saw spots and felt really loopy and then of course that triggered a, an anxiety attack for him. I can get away with a pretty high dose of this myself and while I find it relaxing I've never had any of those symptoms but if you ever do play around with this plant use just a little bit at first. Here's a little close-up of the leaves. Beautiful beautiful plant. This will get pretty tall. Be aware that this is a hemiparasitic plant so it will plug in to the stuff around it and in this case it's not a big deal. We have dandelion here, we've got um, some wild strawberries, but as other uh, in other locations where there may be some toxic plants like Senecio that this will grow near, it might pick up some of those toxins. So not only do you need to be able to identify this plant if you're planning on using the leaves as medicine, you also need to be able to identify what's around it. Here is a little red belted conch fruiting body. And what's interesting is you can see that it used to grow around this aspen here. The aspen outgrew it. <laughs> it doesn't fit there anymore. Uh, but that's pretty cool. I've seen conchs grow around twigs completely before. Uh, but this tree managed to escape. So this is a polypore mushroom, a, a shelf fungus, a conch, known by various things. The botanical name is Fomatopsis shrenkii, and it used to be, or shrenkii, it used to be known as Fomatopsis pinacola, which is actually a strictly European species based on DNA sequen sequencing. But when you look at a lot of the older guidebooks here, even not so old guidebooks, they'll have this one here listed as Fomatopsis pinacola, and it is not. This is a great medicinal conch though. It can be uh, used just as a rejuvenative, rejuvenative tonic tea. Uh, like all medicinal mushrooms, it has immune effective properties, immune modulators, so it can help with allergies and seasonal allergies and things like that, but it can also be useful for, for people with a wimpy immune response. This has been used traditionally for cancer and diabetes, uh, GI tract inflammation, and this, must, this might be a little bit too much information, but one of the things this can be useful for are chronic loose stools and diarrhea from GI tract inflammation. And from personal experience, it's really useful, and I notice a difference when I'm on it versus off it. 
This has also been used for cardiovascular disease and wounds and headaches across the many continents where different related species of this mushroom grows. And while I'm not a big fan of rodent studies, who is? Uh, this has been found in rodent studies to potentially have some benefit even for type 1 diabetes. And so it's a contrived model, but in a lab model of type 1 diabetes of rodents, uh, it was able to help protect the pancreas and keep the pancreas secreting insulin. And so type 1 diabetes is when the body no longer makes insulin due to autoimmune attack. Uh, you know, uh, one of the issues is uh, drugs are used rather than the immune system in this model of type 1, 1 diabetes. So how relevant that really is, is not known, but still an interesting result. There are also some lab studies suggesting that fomatopsis might inhibit VEGF, which is a factor involved in angiogenesis, a process when a tumor, a cancer, triggers local growth of blood vessels to feed itself. So fomatopsis, let me stand up with my bad hip <laughs> and back up for a broader view. So it's on a big old log. One other interesting thing, and I don't know if this is a real thing or not, but I tend to find this conch on downed logs like this rather than on, say, an upright stump like that sucker over there or this one over there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, again, if that's a real thing or coincidence. There's another conch that's common out here called artist conch, and in that case, I usually see it on a right stumps like that one there rather than on a horizontal log like this red belted conch is growing on here. So red belted conch we're in La Plata Canyon here a uh, different location than where I normally do the good medicine confluence herb walk <laughs> and probably at about I don't know 10,000 ish feet or so somewhere is about there uh, but this conch is common even lower down as well as higher up. It's one of the most common conchs in the western U.S. and plays a very important environmental role in breaking down trees and building up soil. I just mentioned a moment ago how sometimes I'll see red belted conchs or other conchs growing completely around a twig. Well, here you go. This one's got three twigs in it. <laughs> this is an older conch. The red belt that is often characteristic of this mushroom is faded and um, when it's young it's usually a little more visible and sometimes even on some of the bigger older conchs. This one's years old. It's maybe hard to see the ridges but each year this perennial conch will grow a little bit and that will add a little growth ridge, kind of like tree rings in a sense. And the outer area that's lighter in color is where the new growth is. Uh, and then as you get closer to the log, that's more obviously where the old growth is. So this one's growing right out of the base of this downed log. I frequently see them on downed conifers here in uh, the Southern Rockies. Thanks for watching and thanks to my little band of people that that watch my videos and comment. Um, if you're looking for flash and really heavily well-produced videos, that's not what you get with me. What you do get is very well-researched and experience-based information on plant and mushroom medicine <laughs> without a theme song, but maybe one of these days I'll put a theme song to this. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. The next videos coming up in this series on our Rocky Mountain Plant Walk will then be looking at plants a little bit further along in their growth stage, their development, and um, we'll be getting into the medicine of those plants, what they do, what we use them for, how they benefit us. Thanks for watching.